In this example, we're going to set up a hierarchy of content types and then a search interface so that users can find all of the different types of data. We'll have refiners set up to filter those results. We'll have verticals set up to divide the different types of data between accounting, engineering, legal files, and then an additional catch-all just to show everything. So let's get started. We're going to be in the admin center first because we're going to build a content type up here that everything else will be based off of. This one is also going to reference a term in the term store that lists all of the clients. So here, as you can see, we've got a term called clients and it's got all of our test terms in here. Uh, so this is going to allow us to associate all of the data that we are uploading as part of this system to a particular client. It'll also allow us to pull all of our data by client, regardless of content type and more on that later. Next, we're going to build a content type that'll serve as the base of all of our other content types. In this one, we're just going to have one field client that's going to reference that term set. We're also going to make it required so that all the files we upload later will all have to have that client specified as part of the metadata. And now let's add that new client field. and then make this required. Now that that's done, we're gonna publish this content type so all the other sites can see this. And more importantly, uh, be available to create content types based off of. So now that that's done, we're gonna go to the engineering site that's, that's gonna be housing our drafting files. Uh, let's just, you know, we'll, we'll assume that these are AutoCAD files or something like that. And we're gonna be storing these and associating with clients. So let's go in here and build out the content type that we need on this site. And remember, we're basing this off of the content type that we already created and published. Now, as you see, we've already got that client field that came down from our base content type that we created. And so we need to add some new fields for this. So this is going to store a drawing. Uh, it's going to be architecture. So there's going to be some sort of a probably a street address associated with it. So we're going to add in some street address type fields to this so that we can keep track of what property does this relate to? Some of these things we're gonna be able to show uh, in search results, uh, whichever ones we would like really. So one of these, the street name field, we'll be using to refine our search results. So we'll do something a little extra with that one later on. But for now, let's create the rest of our fields for this content type. And to make sure we've got all the information we need to correctly uh, identify these files that go into this library, we're going to make sure these fields are required. Okay, so the content type uh, is built out. Let's get a library created and add this content type to it. And we'll probably just call this one drawings. And if you haven't done this before, to enable content types for a list or a library, we go here to advanced settings. And right at the top, you'll see an option that allows us to manage the content types. So now we're going to add our new content type. And when we're done, we're going to take away the document one that we don't want because we want to make sure everything is uh, of this particular content type. All right, now let's take the documents one away. Okay, so we've got the library created. We haven't done anything with the view or things like that. So we'll, we'll go back and do that later. For now, let's go over to the accounting site and let's add in a content type for invoices. So there's a good chance accounting has more than one type of file other than invoices. So in this case, let's make a new kind of an umbrella content type called client accounting files. And this will inherit from client file and will also serve as the base for our invoices. If you need more content types and invoices, then you can just create other ones based off of client accounting files. And the benefit of that is you could use that client accounting files content type ID to find everything underneath it. So this one's gonna have some extra columns as well. We're gonna add one for invoice number.
and let's make this required and now let's add invoice date also making this one required and that'll do it for this content type so let's get a library set up and add this to it so that'll do it for the accounting site for now uh, let's switch over to the legal site and we'll add a content type here to hold client contracts You've seen the benefits of using a hierarchy to build up your content types because common fields that are needed across all of those things are, can, can be put in the root one that everything else derives from so that it'll automatically get added to the derived content types and if you need to make adjustments to that field or add, it, add new fields that are needed across those content types uh, you just add it in one place and it shows up everywhere. So we're going to have a contract date on this content type. Let's add that and make it required. Next, we're going to add sign date to record when the client signs the document. And we'll make this one optional since the client may not have signed it by the time we upload the document. That'll do it for that one. Let's get a library created and set up. So all of our content types are created now. Let's get some files added and metadata populated so we can start seeing this in action. And notice that we've got that client field here along with everything else. Even though client was inherited from a base content type, it all shows up and is ready for use. And let's start filling out all these metadata fields. And to make this a little more user friendly, let's add in those custom fields to the view. All right, now that that's done, let's go over to invoices and upload our data there. And lastly, let's go over to the engineering site and upload our drawings. Okay, so we've got content types created. We've got libraries built off of those and we have data in those libraries. What we need to do now is adjust the search schema so that we can pull the data out the way we need to. So let's go back to SharePoint Admin and enter the search schema. So the majority of the fields that we created, we're gonna to want to refine off of those so that we can filter our search results by things like the client name, invoice number, invoice name, street name. So we're gonna start implementing the refinable fields that we can uh, use to accomplish this search interface that we're gonna build at the end of this video. So we're gonna start with the refinable strings and connect these up to the crawled properties, which should be here now since we have data uploaded and more than likely the crawler has already found those fields. So first we're gonna add the client field. And for this, we're gonna specify an alias so we don't have to use that refinable string name. We could just reference it by client. And then down at the bottom, we're gonna map this to the crawled property that represents client.
Now we'll save this and go on to our next field. Now let's add one for street name. Of all the different street fields that we added, I think the name is the only one we really need to refine on. So let's just add that. And then map this over to the crawled property. And then let's set up invoice number for this next refinable string. Now the rest of these fields I believe are dates. So let's go to the refinable dates so that we could set these up properly. And then let's set up invoice date and it's crawled property. and contract date. And then something I think would be neat to do is we'll add a new managed property uh, called document date. What this can do is we'll map this to invoice date and contract date so that regardless of whether it's an invoice or a contract, we'll have the correct date in there. So we're almost merging that data into a common field, which will help us on the search results page. So we're gonna add both contract date and invoice date to the mappings. So anytime you update the schema, you're gonna to have to wait for a crawl for all that data to be populated into your new managed properties. So one option is you could wait up to about a week for the crawler to crawl your data. But one thing I've found is that you can just make an update to the fields. Anything to kind of modify that record will trigger an more of like an incremental crawl from the SharePoint crawler. And it'll usually index that record in about 15 minutes or so. So since I left the title field blank on all these, let's just go back, set the title field to something, and that should speed up the process significantly. So after doing that and waiting about 15 minutes, the data is showing up now. What you're seeing here is a search interface that I built out using PNP Modern Search. PNP Modern Search web parts are a community supported free set of search related web parts. Things like search box, search results, refiners, verticals, different things like that that you could use to set up very, very slick search interfaces. SharePoint out of the box cannot do this kind of stuff, but these web parts are all free and I highly recommend them. In fact, let me know in the comments below if you'd like to see a video on how to set these things up and I'll gladly do it. So just to give you an overview of what you're looking at here, there's four components on this page. There's a search box to allow us to search the data. There's the search results showing the data. There's the search verticals, as they're called, across the top of the search results page that limits the search results to the content types that we defined. And you'll see all client files, which is actually referencing the content type we created first. Since everything was based off of that, if we filter based off of that content type ID, it will get everything that we've just added, regardless of content type. Lastly, there's the filters or the refiners of the different refinable properties that we utilized in the search schema. For the refiners, you see that we've got different types of controls depending on the field. For client, we've got radio buttons to filter to a particular client. It also shows the number of results for each of these clients, which is a nice feature. For street name, we can search for a street or we can select it. You also have the search ability for clients up there as well. For invoice date, you have begin and end date, so you can filter based off of that. Invoice number is a text field, so it has similar controls to street name and client. 
you see contract date down here and you also see that document date field that we created that will map to either invoice or contract date whichever applies to that, that given record. So you can easily remove invoice date or contract date or both of them and just leave document date and that would serve the purpose of both. If you did that I'd probably rename document date to invoice slash contract date. So let's try this out. Let's select the A1 insurance client and let's check our verticals. So as you see, if I switch to the different types of files that I've created, all mapping to content types, the search results are updated automatically. So this has been a fun example of how you could set up content types and then a search interface to surface that data to users. If you want to learn more about SharePoint search, I've got a video right here that will help you get started.